one of my very best friends, Gertie from Albania, he sent me a WhatsApp message today because he told me that, Doc, we have to figure out the top three problems that men are facing today. What is our community really having a deep problem with? And that leaves them use that leaves them feeling useless and unloved, unwanted. There's no hope for the future for these men. And he the, the first the first question was about mental health, right? About here, this guy. And as Gertie said this to me, I wanted to make this video. And Gertie has always been very straightforward. He's like, Doc, instead of writing notes, instead of you sort of scripting stuff, just speak from the heart. So today I'm going to speak from the heart and I'm going to tell you every single tip, secret, everything that I've learned firsthand in my life when it comes to mental health. Whenever in my life things have been screwed up or whenever I have had depression or anxiety or when I have felt that my life is going berserk and in a chaotic manner, how have I brought these things into order? That's what I'm going to talk about today because if you're, a, especially if you're a young guy and you are perhaps in a toxic relationship, you are, uh, maybe your parents are not by your side perhaps you it's hard for you to find a girlfriend or it's hard for you to find a friend even people make fun of you you get bullied uh you don't get good grades at school and you have all this pressure on you whatever the case is you're addicted to alcohol or drugs or or social media whatever that is it's a mental health issue now it's not just mental health obviously there's more stuff but a lot of problems come down to mental health because look you can you can take you can go to the gym and lift weight right you can eat healthy you can do a lot of things for your physical body and of course that's going to help your mental performance too but it's not the only answer because i see in my own life in my own life's experience i see people who lift a lot of weight they are models I remember one guy uh, from Norway when I was in Vegas and we were coaching uh, these these kids on how to pick up girls in Vegas, right? We, I was one of the coaches in, in RSD, if you guys know what that is. And I remember this one guy from Norway. He's like a top model there. And he wanted to, to remain anonymous because, you know, he didn't want people to know that he was there getting coached to pick up girls. And he fucking sucked. Like he had massive, massive approach anxiety. And all of us were like, wait, this guy's physical health is fine, right? If he looks so good, he has a six pack, he has, you know, broad shoulders, he has this really good physique. Why does his mental health suck? Okay. And uh, I don't like to name names, so I'm not going to do that. But there is a very famous YouTuber a fitness guy who I know very well. And, uh, you know, he's young, he's he's in his 20s still, m maybe in his early 30s now. But I remember one time he was pissed drunk. And I was so shocked that, like, this guy who is in such top shape is still drinking and, and he's like sort of like a drunk, not tipsy, but like super drunk. And he was just going girl to girl in a bar and he just looked like a moron. And I saw that and, and, you know, these types of things make us ask this question. Is being in tip-top physical health will get you so far, but you have to have it fixed here first. So, so how do we do that, right? So in this video, I'm going to tell you stories from my own life, things that I have learned firsthand, things I've seen, not some, something I've heard from someone, things I've seen from my own eyes. And then we're going to break down how mental health works. And what I've done in my own life to fix my mental health. Now, first and foremost, I will stress this idea of stoicism. All right. So if you haven't read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, please go read that right now. I started. So I try to read this book every birthday. It's not all the time. I don't get a chance to do it all the time. But 
This year's birthday, I did start it. It was January 20th. I became 41 years old. Uh, and, and, and it was very nice because now I'm in my 40s, right, officially. Uh, or, you know, in my first year of my 40s. So when, so I started reading it about a month ago. I'm almost done with it. It'll take you about a month to read. I only read this book when I'm shitting. Okay, now let's let's get into that. Why do I read Stoicism when I'm shitting? And also we need to get into nasal breathing and, and how that's going to impact your brain because you'll see me in this video. Sometimes I'll take these breaks and I'll give myself a break so I can nasal breathe rather than mouth breathe. Because when we talk, and if you're one of these people who talk a lot, you're going to be breathing from your mouth. And you need to breathe from your nose. Release of nitric oxide, you get better filtration from the hairs in your nose. There's so many benefits to nasal breathing and 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 even the amount of oxygen that gets transferred in your body, all over your body. I believe it is around 20% more when you breathe through your nose. I learned that from James Nestor. If you don't know James Nestor, he has an awesome book called Breathe, a uh, Breath breath and you need to read that book i saw his podcast with joe rogan it's amazing i haven't started reading this book you know full disclaimer it's on my shelf right now over there on my bookshelf and i'm gonna get to it after i finish my current books on sapolsky uh i'm, I'm reading all of sapolsky's books robert sapolsky if you don't know him right now i'm reading behave and a primate's memoir amazing amazing books one thing that you can do for your mental health right away this is Something that is basically in your control is read. So that's the first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down uh, as I talk. I haven't written anything down. Just look if you if you just notice, I've only written down things that Gertie told me in the question, and now I've written down read because uh, I also want to see what what notes I can write and and what comes out through this free association type talking. You need to read things that are interesting for you so for me reading about behavior of animals behavior of humans is super interesting that's why i got a phd in neuroscience even though i didn't study the you know ethology or neuroethology i studied visual perception i studied how the brain interprets visual motion how the hierarchy of brain areas model the visual world and specifically how things move in our in our periphery, in our retina, and so on. That's for another video. But let's get back to read. So when I'm shitting, I read Stoicism, right? So when I finish Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, the second book I'm going to read is um, Seneca's uh, uh, Life uh, uh, on the Shortness of Life. Life is long if you know how to use it. I've also read this book before, and I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to continue to read Stoicism when I'm shitting. Now, for those of you who are used to being on your phone while you shit, don't do that. That's a huge mistake. I don't care what you say. You should not be using your phone when you're shitting or when you're at the gym or when you are uh, waiting in line for Starbucks. Like You should not be using your phone unless you are overtly, willingly, voluntarily volitionally using it it has to be on per for a purpose not because you have nothing else to do now why is that right i'm gonna put phone here right read and then phone usage so you don't want easy dopamine spikes all right now what does that mean when you watch porn for example or when you eat some insane 14 donuts i used to do this when i was at strength camp with elliot hulse he wasn't eating the donuts, but we were. I was eating it, Mark Novak and some other guys there. We would just eat a shit ton of donuts. And and I was the one, sort of the leader, because I would get like 12 to 14 donuts from Frey's in Clearwater and, and, and that area. Amazing donuts. And I would just gulp like 12 down after a 48-hour fast. Fuck. Fasting. That's also another one that we're going to get to one by one. So... My reading strategy right now, 
in the morning when I wake up, I do my work. Right? Today I woke up at 4.30 a.m. Another one there, sleep for mental health. This is a huge one, man, huge one. My uh, One of the guys who helps us with ads for Afro D, amazing dude, really, really smart guy, computer science background. He told me yesterday that when you look at the impressions for searches on Google, the search for apps for sleep has gone up by 440% in the last few years. Now, it is so sad that some motherfuckers are looking for apps to go to sleep where apps are the reason you can't sleep, for God's sake. So one thing I would recommend right away, if you are looking to sleep better, the first idea is, first of all, read before you go to sleep, for God's sake, right? So at night, right now I'm reading Gulag. Gulag Archipelago. Right before Gulag, I finished Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Gulag is by uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And these books I got recommended by, by Jordan Peterson. You know, he has a huge list. So you can look that up. Um, and I'm sure you know who Jordan Peterson is by now. I'm a big fan. Been following him for five, six years now. Read all of his books except his first one, Maps of Meaning. So now, at night, before I go to sleep, I read Gulag because it gives me a sense of gratitude. This is something else for mental health. Gratitude and humility and compassion. These are the, the three big, big levers, uh, if you want, to get in tip-top mental health, tip-top shape, confidence, being able to look at people in the eye, being able to smile at people. This is another one for mental health, smiling. So when you are walking around, you see someone at the gym, you are by yourself. Maybe you are meditating, you are outside in nature. Smile. It's, it's free, man, it's free. I, I see so many people, and, and Tulum is different. I live in Tulum right now, but so many people, when I was in New York or in other places and, and Kiev, and there's this like Soviet energy in people where it, they have this inner trauma of if I smile at someone or if I express my emotion, then I will get killed by Stalin, right? And this is another thing that we have to think about, right? The trauma, I'm going to write down. Maybe I'll give you some tips for trauma and what I've learned in the past few months on trauma because this is a big topic that I've been studying. So let's see, um, let's get back to sleep now. Actually, let's finish the phone part. So if you are addicted to your phone, then first thing you have to admit that you are addicted, okay? You have to fully feel that you can't live without your phone. And now, how do you know if you're addicted to something? Quite simply, after you use it, you will feel guilty. You will feel bad. You will feel like you got raped, taken advantage of. You won't feel good after. That's how you know you're addicted. But while you're using it, you may not even know you're using it. This is also key. So if you look at people at the casino, right? Old people at the casino. I used to live in Vegas. I lived there for a year. People at the casino, especially old people, they'll be pulling the levers all day long at the slot machine. And these people are what they call in the zone. They're in flow, literally. And if you read, there, there's many books on, on how Las Vegas sharks and, and people who operate in these casinos have figured out how to op how to program the machine to have these near misses. It's called near miss. It's a, it's a psychological phenomenon, near miss, where you will pull the lever and you'll get seven, seven, and it's very close to seven, but it's not seven. It's something else. And so you don't win. And you'll keep getting these near misses, near misses, near misses. And this allows your brain to get a little win, to get a little dopamine spike, right? So for those of you who are addicted to dopamine, what does that mean? If you are getting a very easy burst of dopamine without doing real work. This morning, I was explaining to Martha that when we do a cold plunge, we 
immerse ourselves in something very difficult and that triggers dopamine. So if you are not used to ice baths, if you haven't done uh, uh, cold exposure, cold showers, fucking do it. Like, what the fuck are you waiting for? Honestly, man, it's not even a big deal. I remember when I first started doing cold showers, I thought it was like, I was like cool or something. Like, you're not cool. I've seen people do, you know, Wim Hof can go under ice water and, and, and swim underwater and come out the other side. And I remember one time there was like a problem with like some technical difficulty and he was like stuck underwater and they had to like, like, like poke the ice to get him out and he was fine. Right. So there's these amazing and cold exposure for sure. I mean, there's so much here that you can do for free, man, for free. Okay. So back to reading. So what am I reading right now? I'm reading Primate's Memoir and Behave. These are two books by Robert Sapolsky. I read them during the day. I spend somewhere around three to four hours a day just reading. Now, I'm a PhD. I'm an academic. I'm a scholar. So I love knowledge. But I feel that kids love knowledge. All kids. It's not like some kids will be like, oh, I don't want to learn something or oh, I don't want to learn how to speak or I don't want to learn this language. No, as a kid, you absorb everything. This is like, you know, when you go travel somewhere, you're traveling in a city and you're like, you're loving it. You get this massive dopamine spike because your brain is learning things really fast. And that's what happens to us when we are kids. But when we become adults, our brain. So let's talk about this concept of pruning. Pruning happens very early on in the first year and a half to two years of age, but then pruning continues to happen. It's not like it stops there, but it's happening in other parts of the brain. So for example, in the prefrontal cortex right here, pruning happens until your mid twenties, right? So, so let's uh, take a step back. What is pruning? So when you are born, like when a child is born, he's born with about a hundred billion brain cells. 100 billion. And then, and, and, and bit, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. This is an approximation. And then over time, what happens is brain cells undergo something called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And because of apoptosis, these cells die. And in childhood, when you are exposed to certain activities like let's say you are playing music let's say you are learning a certain language like you know in japanese for example you know this is a joke why did the guy name his company lululemon it's because he didn't want the japanese to copy him because the japanese would be like ruru remen right because in japan l and r are switched with each other right l and r like i'm sure you've heard if you haven't ha ever had a japanese friend they'd be like fucking up the l and r they'd be reversing them i remember Motoharu, one of the postdocs in my lab, when I was with Dr. Angel Alonso, uh, may uh, he rest in peace. Um, Motoharu was from Japan. He was a postdoc. I was a master student at the time. I hadn't started my PhD yet, and, and Angel, uh, our professor, passed away um, from from uh, bacterial meningitis. You know, he had like a really, or encephalitis, I mean, and he had a very very specific strain of encephalitis. Very very sad story he died when he was 47 years old and this is something that you can practice humility for gratitude for right right now you are watching this video right now you are watching youtube man youtube i don't mean to ridicule you or shame you but think about it like and again uh, for mental health i'm gonna uh, touch on this concept of obesity right if you are someone watching YouTube all day or you're watching Netflix and you're just like consuming content, you're not creating anything, you are not going and working out in the morning or in the afternoon, whatever the hell you want, you're not doing breath work, you're not doing ice baths, you're not reading, you're not giving hugs to your family, you're not smiling, you're not going out in nature, you're not going to have tip-top mental health. Now look, you look at someone like Wendy Suzuki. Wendy Suzuki is an amazing professor. She's at NYU. She did, did a, she's done a Huberman podcast. Go watch that. I watched it. It was really good. And Wendy spent decades of her life 
in, in a very fucked up health, right? Her, her, she, she became fat. She went to Aspen one time and she was telling the story. She went to Aspen. She saw all these people skiing and being all beautiful and pretty. And she was fat. She couldn't keep up. She was like, what the fuck? I'm a professor. I, I, I'm like in the leader of the memory field in the world. And still I'm fat. Like, what is going on? And, you know, she had relationship issues. She couldn't spend time with her loved ones, with her family. She had a lot of problems. And Wendy, that moment, decided to go on a, 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 a sort of like a journey towards figuring out how exercise impacts the brain, how exercise impacts mental health. But when you are exercising, if you're on your phone, you're going to get easy dopamine. And that's not what you want. You want to be fully, fully immersed in exercise. You want to be breathing through your nose. I don't care if you're doing high intensity workouts and you, you're doing uh, uh, fucking UFC and martial arts. I don't care what you're doing. Try to figure out how to do deep breathing through your nose all the time. Now, I'll tell you about my sleeping protocol. Sometimes I wear nasal strips which allow my nostrils to expand. This is a great tactic you can use. And I also put tape on my mouth. I got this tape Next Care from 3M, the company 3M. I got it from Amazon. It was like 6 or $7. It's a hospital medical tape. You can shut your mouth uh, just through your lips right here like that, right? I put it on every night and I go to sleep. I've been doing this for six straight nights now. I learned this from James Nestor. I learned it from Coach Jameson, uh, who I do podcasts with regularly, podcast conversations. So that is something you can try as well for your sleep. If you have sleep apnea, if you have to wake up in the morning two or three times, you shouldn't. Waking up one time is okay. Once in a while, if you wake up twice, it's okay. But if you're waking up twice every night, your sleep will be fucked. Simple as that. Now, don't make an excuse. Don't just say this is how it is. Don't just say that all of my friends can't sleep, so I can't sleep either. That's wrong. You have the wrong friends. Now look, people who are not able to sleep well, people who are obese, I do have compassion towards them. So if you are watching this video and you have problems in your life, brother, I love you. I feel what you're going through because I was there. I suffered from low testosterone. My testosterone was 376 nanograms per deciliter. That's fucking low, man. Now it's 801 nanograms per deciliter. It's high. Now, it's not 1300 like Jameson or, or other people in our Afro D nation. And by the way, let me just plug my supplement company right now because if it wasn't for my supplement company, I wouldn't be here talking to you because Afro D has changed my entire life. It helped me double my testosterone levels. But what is Afro D? Simply go on Facebook, on the search, type in Afro D Nation, A P H R O dash D Nation. Join the Facebook group, man. It's free. You will be exposed to the most badass men in the world through this Facebook group. I highly, highly, highly recommend you do that. Because if you don't have, and let me get into gene environment interactions right now. I talk about this all the time in my videos. You guys need to understand this very well. What does that mean? You have certain genes for sleep, for exercise, for losing fat, for gaining muscle, for fasting, for overcoming addictions, for feeling love. And I'm not saying there's one gene for each of these. Each of these might have 200 genes involved. But in order for these genes to turn on, in order for your DNA to do good for you, you need to be in the right environment. Now, let's get into this DNA thing, right? I don't know how much biology you've had, but what I learned as a kid before the field of epigenetics came along is that we are born with DNA and that's it. DNA is everything. What happens, your genotype, which is your genes, your phenotype, which is your physical, what what, how you can demonstrate those genes, right? Like your facial hair, your, uh, your, 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 your muscle mass, your 
eye color, right? These are phenotypes. So if you want to understand DNA, you have to first think about epigenetics. So what happened when you were a fetus inside your mother's womb, inside her uterus? There were gene environment interactions. So you had genes, but they were turning on and off based on the environment you were in at that time. So if your mom was under stress, you're going to have a greater propensity for stress, for higher cortisol levels, higher than baseline cortisol levels. Now, what is cortisol? It is a glucocorticoid. In animal literature, when you read animal literature, they talk about glucocorticoids. Robert Sapolsky talks about that all the, to- all the time. Glucocorticoids are stress hormones. The stress hormone in humans is known as cortisol, right? Cortisol. So when cortisol is higher than baseline, you will get triggered easily. So you know these people who, you know, you're they're standing and you like tap them on the back or you cover their eyes to like surprise them or you like hold a gun to their head. They don't get surprised at all. They're like super chill. I'm one of those people. Why? Because I have baseline below, very, very low cortisol baseline, right? I'm very calm most of the time. And sometimes I have to consciously force myself to become hyper and and excited and aggressive because I need people to take action. But overall, I'm a very chill person, very, you know, relaxed person. So you want cortisol levels to be below baseline. So if your mother was stressed during pregnancy, you will have higher than average cortisol during baseline, which is just during the day while you're breathing, walking around. And that can impact your life. So you need to have humility here, right? You need to have gratitude here. How? First, be grateful that your mother had you. Like you are on earth, buddy. You are watching YouTube. Buddy, you are someone who has access to food, I'm assuming, clean water. You can go and do 100 push-ups right now or at least give it a shot. You can go running outside. You can sit, close your eyes, Breathe with your nose. Send six seconds in, six seconds out. I'm going to do one for you right now. Like that. It's going to calm you down, buddy. It's going to Make the world focused, right? Now, you might have even noticed a change in my vibe. You know, I was brought into the present moment. I honestly shit you not. I want to continue to do this six second in, six second out because it feels so good. I want to literally quit this video and go do my breath work, which I do every morning. So breath work for mental health. Let me write that down too so I can come back to it. Wow, you are some lucky son of a bitch getting a master class on mental health, literally. So every morning I go to jungle gym with my girlfriend and sometimes with Hamoncito, with Code Jameson, whenever he comes. And we, first thing we do, we put our bags down and we go do breath work. And breath work is about 10 minutes. We do Wim Hof four rounds, simple as that with the nose. I don't give a fuck what Wim Hof says. He's just talking to the pussies who don't want to breathe from their nose. So he's like, breathe out from your mouth. We only do nose. We don't do mouth. It's enough mouth breathing during talking. You don't want to do more than that. So do breath work in the morning. Right after that, we do an ice bath. Three rounds, one minute each, ice cold water. Then work out, then go home and breakfast, and so on. All right, so let's get into fasting. I think we've talked a lot. I want to get into all of these different things. I think I convinced you enough about reading and about what to what the fuck to do with your phone. Oh, another thing with screens. So we have a 7 p.m. deadline every day. 
So after 7 p.m., we are not allowed to turn on screens. Screens are not allowed after 7 p.m. at night. No questions asked. So if you are... Now, why, why does that matter? Melatonin. I'm sure you've heard of this melatonin thing. You might even be taking melatonin supplements. Highly, highly recommend you don't. Because melatonin supplements have like... A thousand times more melatonin than your daily dose that you need for your daily dose. Also, melatonin is a negative feedback loop. What does that mean? Just like testosterone. If you inject testosterone in your body, your body will stop producing naturally testosterone. Just like that, melatonin is a negative feedback loop. If you're injecting, taking a pill, whatever you're doing for melatonin, your body will stop the natural production of melatonin. Now, what is melatonin? Melatonin is a hormone that starts increasing in your body towards the evening, and it's produced by the pineal gland, and it instructs you to go to sleep. So the people, sometimes people can't go to sleep, and they say, oh, my melatonin is low, so I need to take melatonin supplementation. No, you don't. You need to fix your life. You need to fix your day-to-day so you do not need extra melatonin because your body can naturally produce as much melatonin as it needs. Now, I ain't no expert in this. If you want to know about melatonin production, you want to know all this neuroscience and all the mechanisms of all this stuff, go listen to Andrew Huberman. Okay, I've listened to 80, about 80, 78 or so of his podcasts. I think he has like 115 now. Shit ton of podcasts. So much content, so much material. It's amazing. I listen at 3 to 3.2x speed. I either listen on Spotify, so like at 3 to 3.5 because he talks too slow. It's too boring and I can't stand it. So I listen very, very fast and I am listening because I'm also a neuroscientist. And by the way, Andrew Huberman and myself, we have the same, uh, 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 basically the same progeny in neuroscience. So Andrew Huberman's great-grandfather is also my great-grandfather in the neuroscience progeny. And uh, it's, that's Dr. David Hubel, the, the Nobel Prize winner. Because we, Huberman and I, we both studied vision. You know, our labs both studied vision. You know, he went to, um, he's at Stanford now. And I think he did his, I don't know where he did his PhD. I think at somewhere in California, I'm, I, I don't remember now, but, um, but anyway, so we have the same progeny, and Huberman lectures are fantastic, fantastic, so I, I would highly recommend that, I just have to listen very, very fast, because uh, a, lo- a lot of the stuff is just, he's just talking too slow, um, so, and even for me, even my stuff, right, if you think that I'm talking too slow, motherfucker, go in YouTube and click on that little button, and, and, Change the speed to whatever you want, 2x. Uh, I don't think you can go higher than 2x, but there's a hack. There, th- comment below if you want to know a hack. There's a hack you can do. You can press function F12, and you can change the speed in a YouTube video to exactly what you want, like 2.493x. You can do that. And Hamoncito, Co. Jameson, figured this out, and he sent me the code, and I've been using it. It's like the coolest shit in the world. So you... You should not be listening to boring, uh, very slow-talking people. So if I'm talking too slow for you, change the speed in YouTube and listen to me fast, especially if you can consume information very fast, because I can. All right, so so that's uh, it's probably enough for, for breath work. I mean, uh, if you have more questions, comment below. I'll, I'll tell you more shit, man. Okay, let's get into smiling. I just checked it. What I've seen in the world is... This lack of giving people love, right? When you smile at someone and they smile back at you, you make this eye contact. Look, I don't know if you know Sherry Turkle, Dr. Sherry Turkle. She's a full professor at MIT. She wrote the book Alone Together, uh, 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 conversation, uh, Creating Conversation, I believe, Creating Conversation, something like that. Also read that when I read Alone Together. And she recently uh, wrote The Empathy Diaries, which is her memoirs. I have it on my bookshelf. I'm going to read it soon, probably in the next four or five months. And hopefully we'll get an interview with her on the podcast. Uh, Sherry Turkle, phenomenal person. She said in one of her books that eye contact is the highest 
human action, right? It's not language. It's not like music. It's none of that shit. It's eye contact, right? And I know in New York, they have every year this like eye contact like seminar workshop where you sit and you stare at someone's eyes for, uh, you know, three minutes and then you move to someone else. It's like eye contact speed dating. It's fucking phenomenal stuff. And I didn't do it, but I was there when they were doing it in New York. So I recommend you have compassion towards people, right? So when you're driving, you know, don't try to fuck someone over and, and, and pass them or, or, or not give them the right of way. Smile. Greet people with love because you have the ability to do that. You live in the world where you're watching YouTube, so you are already privileged, man. So have some gratitude for being here. Have compassion towards other human beings who don't have access to clean water, to food. They don't have access to the English language. They can't get education properly. Have compassion towards them and have compassion towards yourself, right? Give yourself a hug sometimes. Every morning after breath work, I give the tree a hug, right? I used to be embarrassed to give trees hugs. But every morning, I feel no shame at all, no guilt, nothing. I just go give the tree a hug and I just assume everyone is good. Like, it's humility, right? I don't know if the tree can communicate with me. I have no idea if the tree has any signals that he, she, it is sending me. I don't know. So have that humility. Have that compassion towards everyone. Smile at people. Okay, sleep, we covered enough. Again, if you have more questions about sleep, comment below. I'll make an entire lecture on sleep if you feel. But Andrew Huberman has four three-hour episodes on sleep, for God's sake. So I highly recommend you watch that. But in a nutshell, screens off at 7 p.m. When you wake up in the morning, go see sunlight. At night, don't keep the lights on so much. You know, again, avoiding screens is huge. Go to sleep early. I go to sleep at 9 p.m. max. Sometimes it becomes 9.30. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it becomes 9.30. But we try to be in bed at 8 p.m., and around 8.39, we try to be just fast asleep and, and already in REM sleep, hopefully, at that time. Also, sleep is very important for your testosterone production because testosterone is produced during sleep, motherfucker. Growth hormone is produced during sleep. I don't know if you saw the most recent Huberman about sleep. She, he interviewed a Dr. Poe. And they talked about sleep. And Dr. Poe said that if you don't sleep at the same time every night, which is, you know, and early, you could miss the production of growth hormone. Growth hormone helps us lose fat. Growth hormone helps us grow as kids. I mean, it, it has so many benefits, man. It goes hand in hand with testosterone production. You need to go to sleep early. I don't care if you want to go to parties. I don't care if you want to go to clubs. I don't care if you have night shift work. I don't care. Fix your life. Do something to fix your life. You can. You have a human brain here. You can do anything you want. Trauma, I'm not going to get into this, this video. I put an X on it. I think um, it's not important right now because that's an entire three-hour video. For trauma, I would recommend you watch Dr. Paul Conti, C-O-N-T-I, um, Italian, amazing Italian dude, professor, uh, not a professor, a clinical psychologist, he's a psychiatrist, sorry, he's a psychiatrist, therapist, um, he was on Lex Friedman, he's done a Joe Rogan, he's done an Andrew Huberman, I've seen them all, all these podcasts are amazing, Dr. Paul Conti, Conti is a fucking gangster, Watch Dr. Paul Conti on trauma stuff. Read his book. I have three books on trauma on my bookshelf. The, the book Trauma by Dr. Paul Conti. We have Dr. Gabor Mate or Mat Mate. Um, uh, his book is called, um, uh, what the fuck is it called? Uh, the Myth of Normal. Yeah, it's right here. The Myth of Normal. And then The Body Keeps the Score. These three books about trauma I'm going to read next. And I'll continue to make some videos on trauma for you guys. Cold exposure already talked about um, obesity. <sighs> oh, man. 
If you are obese, let me take a six second. If you are obese, look, my mom was obese. I helped her the last eight months. She's been working on it. She lost about 35 pounds. She looks amazing. Her before and after photos are phenomenal, man, phenomenal. If you are obese, there is hope. I swear to God, man. If you can't take your shirt off, go around. Look, again, I'm not trying to brag, but I'll give you my example. When I'm at the gym, my shirt is off. When I'm at the pharmacy, my shirt is off. When I go to Walmart, my shirt is off. When I walk around the street, my shirt is off. At the co-working space, my shirt is off. At home, I'm naked usually. I'm very proud and honored and I feel so much gratitude that I had the ability to be in a field of men's health where I was able to fix my body. And I fucking urge you, man get in shape really get in shape for this when you have the anxiety to take your shirt off when you have the anxiety to not be confident with a woman when you have the anxiety to not be able to express yourself fully That will affect your mental health big time. You will undergo trauma. Your brain will get wired a certain way because you are not fully yourself because you are not proud of your body. So the first step to fixing your mental health is fix your body. You got to look good, man. Don't look up to fat people, please. And this is... Like, something that I learned from Martha, actually. One time I was watching Nassim Taleb. By the way, if you don't know Nassim Taleb, go read his books. Amazing guy. He has written, you know, Anti-Fragile, which I've read. Black Swan, I've read. I haven't read Skin in the Game yet, but he's written some amazing books. And uh, Black Swan, I haven't read at all. Like 60, 70% I've read. Again, just being honest. But Nassim Taleb, I was watching him once, and Nassim Taleb is fat, Right? And Martha told me, she's like, why are you listening to this fat guy? And I started thinking, I was like, wait a minute, she's right. But I'm listening to Nassim Talib, not for his health advice or his life advice. It is for his how to be anti-fragile advice, his finance advice, his, advi his philosophy on how to make the day in such a way that you increase your gains and minimize your risk. So I would highly recommend you lose weight somehow. And again, you want to be in the right environment to lose fat. Go to Afro D Nation, type it in Facebook, buddy. APHRO D Nation, join our Facebook group. You're going to get access to all of these amazing people who've undergone massive transformations in their life. And through that interaction, through that environment, you will be able to lose weight because they're losing weight. So obesity, we kind of covered. You know, there's a lot more to say, but um, fasting. Um, I don't do long fast anymore, like a three, four day fast, which I used to. I've done a five day fast two times, four and a half to five day fast twice. I've done a no water fast for 48 hour one time. I've done 24 hour water fast, uh, uh, sorry, a dry fast for 48 hours. It was actually 50 hours. And oh, by the way, I got to tell you this. This is huge. This is the last thing I'm going to say about fasting because we got to wrap this up. When I was with my ex in Sweden, uh, in Stockholm, I did a 50 hour dry fast. And this is great for your mental health, for your focus, because after the 50 hours of, you know, no shower, no brushing teeth, it was a, a hard dry fast. So no brushing teeth, no shower, um, no, uh, no water, no food, nothing, right? 
I didn't let water touch my body at all. And uh, some people drink their urine after the dry fast. I didn't do that. But after the dry fast, I had a massive insight epiphany, which allowed me to realize that my ex was toxic. And I left her, I think, that two or three days after that. And it was the best thing in my life because that taught me that when you fast, your brain, your mental health is so on point, it is so focused that you are able to chime in and have this tunnel vision and know exactly your priorities in life. So highly, highly recommend look into fasting if you haven't done so yet. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, okay, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah. Last three things and then we'll wrap it up. Gratitude. There's an entire neuroscience of gratitude. Watch the Huberman lecture on gratitude if you want. But in a nutshell, instead of giving gratitude to people, have them give gratitude to you. Have a gratitude practice. So like Martha and I have a gratitude practice where I give her gratitude many times a day. She gives me gratitude many times a day. And it's all real. It's all genuine gratitude. It's okay to give gratitude too, obviously, right? To your parents, to your siblings, to your friends, to your wife, to your kids, to your grandkids. You know, give to the tree outside giving you oxygen, for God's sake, right? Like to the sky, this beautiful sky, uh, to nature, right? To, to the sun, like you can give gratitude so much. So take part in a gratitude practice every single day. Throughout the day, feel gratitude. And one way that I know to feel gratitude is by being in the moment. Being in the present moment. And this is something I learned from Marcus Aurelius more than anyone else. Look, you're not going to be here one day. I'm not going to be here one day. All we have is this moment. So cherish it. Give gratitude for it. Give gratitude that you are able to breathe. Next one is humility. Look, man. Have humility for your brain. Be humble that you don't know what is going on, right? There's a hundred billion neurons, more or less, in your skull. And the number of connections, the number of possible connections, which are known as synapses, in one human brain are more than the number of known particles in the universe. It's mind-boggling stuff, man. Go read about the brain. Go learn about neuroscience. It's in your head. You have the skull. Learn about your body, please. Learn about biology. Learn about physiology. Learn about philosophy, Right? Read, read. So that's all I'm going to say about humility. Then the last thing I want to talk about is compassion and self-love. <sighs> compassion starts from self-compassion. Give yourself a hug. Give yourself a hug like this. Give yourself a kiss sometimes. And even when you're doing breath work, you can tap yourself, you know, go like this, tap all over your body. I do that all the time. When I was a kid, I had the fear of touching my penis. And what I used to do is I would roll around on my stomach in the bathtub masturbating. Or I would do it on the bed, or I would do it on the carpet. Carpet is a little abrasive, but the, the tub is really harmful because my dick, if you look at my dick now, there's, um, it's kind of like, uh, has these little spots, like these uh, injuries, like these uh, wounds type. For when I was you know, nine, 
10, 11 years old. I used to do that on the bathtub. You can imagine how the dick could get injured that way. And thank God my bedroom performance is great. And thank God I, you know, I have the right partner. And um, I was able to fix my testosterone and, and fix my dopamine levels and, and, and do enough pelvic exercises and, and work out enough to get my blood flow on tap. And thank God you know, sex is okay. But um, I had to have compassion for myself and forgive myself. You know, the, the inner child, you know, the Farhan. You know, I can see Farhan right now standing in front of me there. And he's watching me do this video. I can see it. I can imagine little Farhan. And sometimes I imagine little Farhan with me. And, uh, you know, playing, playing and doing chup, 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 chup in the water, which I used to do as a kid. And um, have compassion for yourself, you know. Forgive yourself. Like, be in the moment, man. Like, life starts now. There is a lot of hope for the future. You can fix your life. You, if you believe that no one loves you, well, I can stand and tell you that the universe loves you. The tree loves you. It's giving you oxygen. You know, dogs... Your dog, if you have a pet or other dogs, like dogs love everyone, right? More or less. Maybe not in Tulum, but dogs do love everyone. And um, if you feel hopeless and everyone is against you again, join Afrodi Nation. Go on Facebook. I'm giving you the key here. I'm giving you the real key. Type in Afrodi Nation, A P H R O dash D Nation. And join that group. You will find people there who will give you real love. They, you can talk to them. You can send them a voice message. You can do whatever you like. And I would urge you to really focus on compassion throughout the day. Give yourself the love and read amazing things. Give yourself the love and do breath work. Give yourself the love and go to the gym. Give yourself the love and go out in nature. Give yourself the love and meditate. Give yourself the love and be gratid have gratitude to, to yourself. Really, really have compassion to yourself. And once you forgive yourself, once you have compassion to yourself, you know, talk about your traumas. Talk to other people. That's the first step. Talk about what has happened in your childhood. You know, talk to the wall. Talk to the tree, talk to an ant, talk to a dog. If you don't want to talk to a person, talk to yourself, talk to a mirror, but start with compassion towards yourself because buddy, there is hope. You can fix this guy. You can really, really rewire your brain and really make gains in your neurology. All right. That's the masterclass on mental health. I'm going to go continue to read Robert Sapolsky, the word, the, the book Behave and A Primate's Memoir. They're amazing. Two other books that I've read by Robert Sapolsky, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers and The Trouble with Testosterone. Really good books. All right, man. Um, I wish you have low cortisol in your baseline and be calm and peaceful and give yourself love and become fit uh, in mentally, physically, spiritually, sleep well, do your breath work, do nasal breathing all day long. Go thank your parents, thank the world, thank the present moment, stay right here. Read up Marcus Aurelius, read Seneca. If you don't have money to buy these books, there are PDFs available online. I'm sure that these authors will forgive you for pirating them. And in the comments below, let me know what questions you have about neuroscience, about mental health. How can I help other aspects of your mental health so you can get back on track, so you can fix your testosterone levels, your cortisol levels, your dopamine levels? How can I help you? You can write in the comments below. See you next time, buddy. Love you.